Hello everyone, Insane Frame here and welcome to another video. In the last video we did Can You Beat Fallout 4's Grognak the Barbarian and that was really cool. So today we're going to change up the form a little bit and throw a curveball and ask Can you beat XCOM enemy within with only one soldier? For those of you that are new to XCOM, XCOM is a turn-based strategy game where you use a team of four to six soldiers per mission with different skills, abilities and equipment from different classes to work well as a team like a well-oiled machine. We won't have that luxury as we will only have one soldier, so the challenge is definitely going to be a tough one for sure. We'll need our one soldier to effectively be a walking one-man army, but my main worry this challenge is when our soldier gets injured as wounded soldiers can't be used for missions which is not good also you need to be able to respond to threats and missions at all times with boots on the ground and having only one soldier that is going to be extremely difficult and have harsh consequences also i'd like to give a mention to a excellent youtuber called the backlogs who attempted this i won't spoil the video but i will link the video in the description down below but we'll see how we fare for this challenge as it seems like a heck of a lot of fun so with all said and done let's go over the rules we will only be able to use one soldier. This is excluding the first mission though. Only one operative solely for covert ops. They're only going to be used for infiltrating Exalt. Nothing else. No glitch for exploits, no cheating or modding, and we're gonna be playing on normal difficulty. We start the game, we select a difficulty, which will be normal, and decide to set up our base in Asia as the 50% discount on the officer training school and the foundry upgrades will be insanely useful. Our first mission is underway and we have a few sectoids versus our squad, it's not that difficult at all. And when we complete the mission, it is absolutely no problem, but right off the bat, it's only going to get more difficult from here on out. Once back at base, we get one of the rookies promoted to the class that we want, which is the Assault class, which is absolutely fantastic. It will become very apparent when we choose the Assault class later, but for now, we fire all of the soldiers in our barracks and we begin the meld research ASAP. Our first abduction mission comes to bear and we decide to go for some engineers as our reward. The mission itself goes better than expected, we even make a 30% chance shot doing critical damage and the rest of the aliens are shotgun in the face without a second thought so the mission is a huge success. Back at base we get a workshop up and running to help in the long term and shortly after we shoot down a UFO. Unfortunately our soldier is still wounded so we have to ignore it. We get another abduction mission though and we get fairly lucky as panic isn't really a concern at the moment so we go with the easiest mission so we can get some XP for our soldier. During the mission we manage to get a fantastic grenade taking out three aliens and we use gun and run. Gun and run just allows us to get an extra movement and still shoot. We manage to shoot a sectoid buffing his teammate so both of them fall, allowing us to complete the mission with no extra damage which is absolutely brilliant. Our victory pays off as we get a promotion and in this game promotions lead to abilities which are divided into two variants, active abilities and passive abilities. We get two abilities to choose from at this rank and since survival is incredibly important to us us, we go with tactical sense so we get plus five defense per an enemy in sight to a maximum of 20. We also get a medal for our effort and medals give small but very significant buffs so we decide to go for plus five defense whilst in cover. Then our soldier gets awarded the medal with a little cutscene which is really really cool. The genetics lab comes online and not a moment too soon as we now have access to G mods which give powerful buffs to our soldiers. We immediately go for adaptive bow marrow which speeds up wound recovery time from battle by 66% and we can now regenerate 2 HP per round in battle of our original HP. A very powerful and very potent mod for us. However, our soldier will be gone for 3 days, which is quite costly. But we do get a request from Mexico to put up a satellite to get 200 credits, which is absolutely amazing. We use the cash to build 3 more satellites in engineering, which is absolutely huge at this stage of the game. After waiting three days, our guy was fresh out of the gene lab and thankfully nothing came up. We get a monthly report from the council, everything is going pretty smoothly and with the funds we decide to get our basic facilities in our base set up so things are looking really good. We get more abduction missions and we decide to go for the cash and we depart the mission. We shotgun a lot of enemies in the face which is excellent, we heal up a little during the mission and thanks to our gene mod things are looking pretty good. 
We managed to shotgun the last sectoid in the face, making this mission a huge success. We get back to base and our soldier has two days recovery, which isn't too bad, but we also get the International Service Cross, which gives plus two aim per a continent bonus. It might seem small, but any aim bus we can get is absolutely fantastic. We also get promoted to sergeant and we go for close and personal, so any attack made within four tiles of us no longer ends our turn, but we can't combine this with gun and run in the same turn, but an extra attack is absolutely ridiculous for for us. We then managed to get our first council mission and these are generally special missions that have high rewards and when the mission begins we play very defensively and are very patient. We managed to get some early kills and we find a civilian which is really good and we go ahead and kill some more thin men. They do manage to injure us pretty badly but we do regen our health thanks to our G mod but we finish up the mission and manage to complete it putting us in a very good position at this stage of the game. We also get a promotion back at base but we immediately go to the officer training school and get rapid recovery so we heal twice as fast from wounds taken in battle which is amazing we also get iron wheels so our soldier gets a bonus to their will every time they are promoted which is very useful we promote Lieutenant Spitfire Hagen and get Rapid Fire. This allows us to make two attacks instead of one, however we suffer an aim penalty, but this is very good for taking out tough opponents with a lot of health. We get abduction missions again and we go for more cash as our reward so we can help our satellite coverage. We begin the mission and we get a sectoid kill, but we got the enemy I've been dreading, the Seeker. This enemy cloaks itself and strangles your troops. Normally this isn't a problem, but since we only have one soldier, it's pretty much an instant mission failure if it gets us. However, we can run away and bide our time, but we have to keep moving just so the Seeker can't use its melee on us. Eventually, the Seekers do uncloak and due to our ability to shoot within four tiles, we can safely take out both Seekers. Not gonna lie, that was a pretty nerve-wracking experience, but it'll be extremely beneficial for us. We get some sectoids next and a few of them get a grenade so all is good and one gets a shotgun to the base. Then we get floaters which are very easy as they just jump next to us in our effective range, making a couple more for our tally. We end out with more sectoids and run and gun one in the face to end the mission. Once back at base we get a promotion, this one is the big one as Captain Spitfire unlocks the ability called Close Quarter Specialist. This ability triggers when an enemy gets within four tiles of us and we automatically take a reaction shot at them. The broken part of this ability is there's no hard limit to the amount of times it can proc, providing we have the ammo for our weapon, allowing us to be very offensive with our mobility. We get our first terror mission and the goal of the terror missions is for us to save as many civilians as possible while the aliens prioritise killing civilians. We begin saving civilians by moving next to them and letting them evacuate and we also get introduced to chrysalids who are fast and relentless melee attackers that can also poison us. They get a taste of close combat specialists and we do decent damage to them and on our turn we put them down. We deal with the floater and another jumps on in and gets a good old shot. We then see a chrysalid and shoot it to pieces and to my surprise the terror mission is over and we saved 13 civilians which is an amazing result for one soldier that's pretty damn good back at base we are awarded with a promotion and get the perk extra conditioning so we get extra health based off the armor the heavier the armor the more health we get a solid perk for our survival our next mission is a council story mission and we go and meet zhang who's part of the triad we are here to retrieve an artifact, a cutscene plays, and we are set with retrieving this gentleman. It's pretty easy as it's just thin men for the most part, and we can one-shot them. A chrysalid is thrown in for good measure, but we're a hard counter for the little guy, and he gets shot to pieces. Zan makes it to the evac point, and we finish off the aliens and can them in, ending the mission. We get back to base and we do some research, allowing us to get the rebreather, a essential piece of gear for us to make sure seekers don't one-shot us anymore. A very welcome addition. The count will then say Mexico and Canada have withdrawn from the XCOM project with you know all things considered isn't too bad but but to compensate we decide to launch three satellites over America India and Australia giving more funding and coverage we put in more orders for satellites so we'll receive two satellites every 10 days thanks to our prior order it's time for a UFO landing, which is excellent as we need alien materials. We equipped our respirator and our lone wolf gets to it. We begin with some thin men, they manage to get some overwatch shots on us, but a good shotgun blast solves the problem. We fall back and take out a couple of floaters and then we advance on the UFO. Enemies trickle out fairly slowly, but we hold our ground taking the aliens out as we go. It works incredibly well and we close in on the traveller, one shot on him and end the mission with a thin man being destroyed. All in a day's work with excellent results. 
results. Once back at base we get a promotion but Colonel Spitfire still has a long way to go. But we go for Killer Instinct so every time we use Run and Gun we now have 50% more critical damage when we use Gun and Run. This skyrockets our damage for the tougher enemies later down the line. We finally have some alien alloys and we begin research on Carapace Armor. We also fill in a request for some Reaper Rounds net and decent cash which we build a research lab with. We get the next round of abduction missions. Once again we want some cash so Egypt may be in a state of disarray but we'll sort that on the future. So we head on over to Germany instead, we get aboard the ship and drop in the mission. It's unusually quiet until we spot an enemy and then the battle begins and we hilariously manage to take the vast majority of the enemies on in a small room. Close quarter specialist comes into its own as we kill quite a lot making this mission conclude in a favourable way. We build a satellite array so we can get more satellites in the air. We also get tactical rigging and due to our continent bonus it's half price. We can now take two items into battle and we also launch a satellite over Egypt so they can chill out a little bit. We then order a pair of interceptors for Africa which is excellent so we can have some air coverage. Finally, we research carapace armor and buy some from the folks in engineering. We also get introduced to Exalt from a cutscene and we begin using our operative to infiltrate. Well, it's back to abduction missions and we take out Arc Throw this time just in case. The mission is very quiet, but we do find some floaters and kill one. Then we switch to our pistol and get reaction shot, but we use the Arc Throw to capture it. There's more floaters, but it's just the case we go up to them and shoot them in the face, rinse and repeat until the mission is complete. Once back at base, we have a satellite uplink, so we send three more satellites and do more coverage over China, Nigeria and South Africa. And then we get the Africa Continent bonus, which is all in. So our XCOM budget is increased by 30%. A very welcome buff indeed. We go back scanning and get a UFO landing so our hero gets to work. He knows the drill by now and does a grand old job of kicking alien butt. Then we find the alien that we've been looking for which is a Mouton which is amazing. We manage to capture one and we go around the UFO taking out various units and then we capture a second Mouton which is brilliant. Finally we'll go around to the bridge and destroy the traveller completing the mission which is fantastic. We get back to base and begin interrogating the Mouton which is quite amusing and we also have the Council Medal of Honour. The power we can select here is a really tough choice but I decide to go with plus one aim and plus one will per mission completed with no deaths. It caps out at plus 10 which is incredibly good. We then get info from our operative and have a covert ops mission underway. We grab the skeleton suit armor to help out and some reap rounds to up our crit rate with our weaponry. The mission itself is mainly king of the hill, we have to hold a position and exalt members are certainly overwhelming us. However we slowly chip away at them whilst our operative is away from the fight hunkering down as per the rules. They are not allowed to assist us in any way shape or form whilst they're on the mission. Once the exalt forces are dealt with we complete the mission and continue progressing with the main story as Dr. Varlin explains her finding which is always nice. We begin researching a light plasma rifle as we are still using the starting shotgun that we started with but the council review our progress and decide that we can have a boatload of cash with lots of engineers scientists to boot. So we buy more satellites and get building an array with two extra labs. The aliens throw more abduction missions at us and we manage to get the jump on a cyber disc, a powerful enemy. We take the repair drones out and we damage the cyber disc. We manage to get a overwatch shot and run and gun the cyber disc down. Then we encounter our first mechtoid. We grenade the sectoids so the mechtoids can't have any shields. The thin man gets guns down and we use our shotgun to empty our ammo in the mechtoid. It still isn't dead so we have to run away, reload our shotgun and we come back for round two to finish it off. That was a tough enemy for sure. We finish up by killing a pair of mutons by shooting them in the face and we complete another mission. Back at base we finish research on the light plasma rifle and do a lot of interrogations slash autopsies which helps out but we decide to go to the gene lab and get mimetic skin so we can go invisible in high cover allowing us to scout and ambush enemies much much easier, a invaluable tactic for us. We get another council mission and grab a light plasma rifle for our mission. It's quite a cool horror movie vibe as zombies are roaming around like a seaport town but it's not too difficult as we use our plasma weaponry and then we find a chrysalid inside the sea creature. 
We deal with more chrysalids and all is well. That is until we find a whale spawning chrysalids every turn, which is not good. We manage to get to the top of the ship and set down an airstrike beacon, but then the chrysalids close in and they start surrounding us and we keep using our plasma rifle, but thankfully the grapple hook allows us to get to safety of a rooftop out of range of the chrysalids and we quickly run to the evac point by the skin of our teeth. We let the airstrike take care of the enemies for us via a cutscene, which is awesome. That was too close. We upgrade our satellites in the foundry to be stealth satellites. Speaking of satellites, we launch two more satellites, one over Russia and one over France. Then the abduction missions come around again. At this stage of the game, it's what we can solve as we're starting to fall behind on our damage. We go for the UK as its difficulty is one stage below the others. The mission goes fairly strange as we take out units early and damage a cyber disc, but it gets away. When we catch up to the cyber disc, it gets destroyed, letting us sweep up the mutons with some decent kills. We kill the last enemy and jobs are good on. Exalt next and it's a little different as we have to hack some relays so our optic would be taking a more active role by hacking the relays but no help in whatsoever as per the rules. So we get everything we need then make a getaway as quickly as possible completing the mission. We launch two more satellites to cover South America and we get the continental buff we have way so autopsies and interrogations are done instantly. We get an alien terror attack which should be interesting and as soon as we arrive we decide to hold our starting position and play defensively. We score a few chrysalid kills but we manage to hold the line and keep nets and kills where we can which works out really well and before we know it the terror mission much like the last one was a success amazing. Back at base we get some chitin platen which is a direct upgrade from our rebreather. It also reduces melee damage and has a little bit more of a HP buff so it's a must have. We shoot down a huge UFO and have another mission at hand but this time we have to capture the traveller. Upon arriving there is heavy resistance right from the get go. A group of mutons appear but we gun them down no problem. A side disc shows up and we get a decent crit blowing it up. We find the traveller and use the arc for it and capture it. Outside is a mechtoid and we manage to rack up enough damage so we can reload and put an end to it with a second volley. We then get Dr. Valen explaining about the crystal and Dr. Shen explains about building a device. We begin research on a plasma rifle, then construct one for ourselves. The council called to say they are impressed with us, so thank you very much council members. And we manage to build some titan armor which gives a ridiculous amount of health to us. We pay a visit to the gene lab and get the adrenal gland. I'm not sure if it affects us but for the cool factor it's definitely worth it. Our research of the outsider is complete and we manage to find a base but before we opt in to breach the base we make sure to get all the gene mods we can and finish our covert ops mission. Once it's done it's time for the alien base. When we arrive at the alien base the aliens have a lot of HP but since we now have a sufficient damage output it's not really any trouble. However there is quite a lot of tanky enemies but we take our time and deal with them as they come so it's really no trouble at all. But we do suffer a lot of damage but mimetic skin is an absolute lifesaver for us because we can scout out the dangers ahead and pick our battles accordingly. A lot of creepy crawlies are spotted but we do manage to beat them back and we chase down a mechtoid who decides to run away from us for some reason. Once we catch up to him we find a sector commander and we pull out our pistol to try and capture him but um yeah it doesn't go too well uh we critted at the wrong time everyone decides to celebrate but dr valen is not having any of it we get a briefing from the doctor that there's something else out there we do all the autopsies and the sectoid commander unlocks the psionic labs for us which we will definitely want to use at some point but we get the holy grail of weaponry that is the alloy cannon it is now ours we get a ufo landing which is perfect for taking the alloy cannon out for a spin we can now take out a berserker with rapid fire and close quarters combined the mutons also die in one shot which is great and we venture into the large ufo a little bit more we wander around for a bit until we find three sectoid commanders and we get them an alloy cannon to the face, courtesy of XCOM of course. We whip our pistol out to damage the last one and capture it successfully. Outside is a mechtoid waiting for us so we kill the sectoid commander and then manage to rapid fire the thing into the ground which is an absolutely awesome feeling and we come out in good form. Back at base we finish the hyperweave research and find the beautiful research that is the ghost armor. We immediately research it as it's going to be amazing. We finish covering the rest of the world in satellites and our ghost armor is fresh off the research bench and we immediately go buy some for Colonel Spitfire. The reason we're taking this over Titan armor is the passive plus 20 defense. It's quite a bit and basically adds half cover wherever you go. 
Whilst we're at it, we decide to get improved med kits and ammo conservation, as it pays to be well prepared. I might as well use the foundry for something. The covert mission we embark on is hilarious, as we one-shot all the exalt members and pretty much dominate the battlefield, so the mission is easily completed without much trouble. And is it's not really worth mentioning at this point because we're like a food blender to them with our new hero soldier. We wait around and we get an unexpected cutscene. XCOM HQ isn't looking too good and Bradford is pretty spooked. We deploy an XCOM HQ and we're given additional forces. But, as per the rules, these forces can't be used, so we resort to brutal methods, which is to use explosives to kill them, so they can't be targeted by the aliens or act as meat shields. As for our operative, we'll treat this as a exalt mission for them, so they can't help out in any way, shape or form. So with that out of the way, let's begin the mission. We prioritise the mechtoid and use metic skin in high cover and open fire, taking the mechtoid out in a single turn with rapid fire. Easy peasy. The second and third mechtoid approach, and one of them propped our close quarter specialist which is excellent we get a lucky critical hit on our turn we also finish his buddy off with a rapid fire showing how terrifying the alloy cannon can be against our enemies there's also a sectoid commander he makes his appearance we don't want any funny business from him so we decide to run and gun as we need to head this way anyway we give him a shotgun to the base so no sign of abilities from him anymore we get to the back of the base where all the airborne units spawn and we make the first move against them and take out a cyber disc with rapid Rapid fire, eliminating the threat before it has a chance to cause harm to us. We also take advantage of close combat specialists as we block the way for the flying units and deal absolutely huge damage, making them a smoking wreckage. We have a squad of mutons next and a berserker. We find the berserker, no problem, and kill it outright, which saves us a beefy target. We also put down a couple of chrysalids because they're not really a problem anymore. But then the Seekers unveil themselves and shoot at us as they are angry we destroyed the Air Force. But we quickly put them both down in one turn, so no more alien Air Force anymore. More alien forces arrive through the tunnel, so we take advantage of mimetic skin and see what's coming our way. We see a mechtoid and some repair drones, so we decide to set up an ambush spot, and we destroy a repair drone. Then the cyber disc comes within range and we use rapid fire taking it down, no problem at all. We use metic skin again to get the drop on the mechdoid, taking down the last of the heavy support for good. We scout ahead and kill the mutons and we get to the tunnel spot in the sectoid commanders. And one of them enters our firing range, proccing close combat specialist immediately. They kind of regret it and the other sectoid commander gets acquainted with our alloy cannon which completes the mission for us. That was pretty damn difficult, but I'm so glad we had the equipment we have at this stage of the game. We get the Star of Terror medal, which gives plus 5 will and plus 5 defense, which is an absolutely amazing effect for us and makes our hero, Colonel Spitfire, a force to be reckoned with. But we're not done quite yet as we get our final G mod, which is Neural Dampening, which gives plus 20 will against side attacks. And instead of being mind controlled, we just get stunned for one turn instead. So it's no longer a game over. We decide to build the Hyperweave Relay and Scilabs finishes production, allowing us to test for Psyonic powers. We put our soldier into the side chamber and he'll be out of action for 10 days, which is an excruciating amount of time, but it will maximise the potential we have at our disposal. A few things do happen and a few places panic, but sure enough, our guy after 10 days has the gift, as it's explained in a cutscene. When we go to customise our hero, he now has a new option with the Psy abilities. To level this up, we're going to need to use an ability called Mind Fray, which is the basic Psy ability. But a perfect opportunity comes in the form of a terror mission. We start the mission and we find a lot of enemy forces. It's fairly overwhelming, including a couple of berserkers, but they're really no trouble as the alloy cannon punches through them. But we use Mind Fray on the Mutons as they're easily targeted with Psy powers. It turns out it's ideal as once they're hit, they want to run away, procking our ability close combat that they get shot for extra damage mind fray is only five damage but it does debuff the target and lets us save on our ammo so definitely a useful tool to have we get back to base and get a psi rank we decide to go for psi inspiration as it gives plus 30 willpower over three turns which is actually kind of a big deal and can really make a difference we use exalt as side training dummies and give them lots of nightmares it's absolutely hilarious but shortly after the covert ops mission we get our final rank of the psi abilities and this is the big one as we now have access to mind control 
letting us use our enemies against themselves really up in our utility and giving us more options on the battlefield. We managed to intercept the large earth by landing and many of the enemies are upgraded variants of previous enemies so we engage some heavy floaters and even mind control one of them to do some scouting for us. We get an absolutely horrible revelation as the enemy has a new unit called a sectopod which is a mech toy on steroids with an extremely large health pool and defences that even our alloy cannon struggles to punch through. We get an idea to mind control a mech toy but it gets blown up almost immediately after we control it thanks to the sectopod's devastating firepower. So we find full cover and begin using rapid fire as much as we can. The sectopod keeps retaliating in kind and all it would take is one shot and we're gone. But three rapid fires later the sectopod gets put down. A very nasty thing indeed. Anyway we continue exploring the huge supply ship and find our favourite things which is seekers. Thankfully seekers are no sectopods and get blown to bits without much effort. We get inside the UFO and we walk around a little bit and find two sectoid commanders who get taken out no problem. Easy as pie. Once back at base we spend a lot of time making firestorm aircraft and arming them with plasma cannons so we can take the larger ships coming in. We have a overseer UFO and we need to shoot it down and the moment of truth arrives and all is well. We send in the Sky Ranger and get our lone hero deployed into the fray. We close in on the UFO and find a Muton Elite. We go ahead and use our mind control for some fun and we decide to make a ball out the Muton Elite and drop a grenade to blow up the side of the wall and see what's inside. We do two one shot one kills on the Muton Elites and we approach the UFO where we find an Ethereal. Think of these guys as the Sectoid Commander's boss and you won't be far of what it's capable of. Anyway we shoot the Ethereal and it reflects a projectile straight back at us with its Jedi mind tricks. The Ethereal tries to use its psionic powers on us but it fails due to our high willpower. Anyway we get up close and we kill the Ethereal and a pair of heavy floaters come on by. We use stealth and sneak up on them killing one outright with the oil cannon and mind control the other one which comes in very handy when we go up against the Sectopod. We use the floater and manage to take out the repair drones and focus fire on the sector pod, allowing us to take it out but these things are very difficult to handle and we are just about managing. We get a cutscene shown off the new artifact that we just recovered which is awesome as it's purple and lovely so we go ahead and research it and unlock the most ridiculous sounding room called the Gollop Chamber. Anyway, we begin construction of the Gollop Changer and get it online very quickly. We then get the Psy Armor research and get it made. The chamber says we can use the soldier to access it and the game warns us that this is our final warning. No going back. So we continue and we get a lovely cutscene. A Colonel Spitfire and he's doing something with his Psy powers which is pretty cool to be honest. We then get our final mission which is the temple ship. We load our single guy on the ship wearing his Psy armor as it's the final mission. So we load up in the Sky Ranger, get the briefing and when we land in the temple there's no turning back. We begin the mission, it's fairly tame, two side disc spawn and because of the story we have access to the Rift Psionic ability, a very powerful ability that can hit multiple enemies. So we take out a cyber disc against repair drones in one shot. We rapid fire the second cyber disc taking it out with ease. We then get swarms of enemies ranking up in difficulty as we have the alien narrator explaining each of the origins of each alien we've faced thus far. It's pretty easy and not too much trouble, however that changes once we see two sector pods. And one is bad enough but two is just a death wish so we use Psionic Storm to weaken one of them and we stick to high cover and manage to get enough damage to destroy one of them. The second one we manage to close the gap and use gun and run and rapid fire to maximise our damage and destroy it. We then make our way to the final area. We meet the Ethereals and there's three of them along with two Muton Elite. So we use mind control on one of the Mutons to draw the fire away from us creating a flanking opportunity whilst the Muton eats bullets for us and falls. We sneak up on the left Ethereal and immediately kill it with our rapid fire letting us have a foothold against the enemies. We use our Psionic Rift to kill the other Muton Elite and injure the main antagonist. We fall back a bit and stick to high cover to remain invisible and do the same tactic for the other Ethereal. But this one survives our double tap and we take some psionic damage. We use a third tap and the Ethereal then dies. Now it's just time for the last alien of the run and a terrible camera angle but we get up in his face and use another rapid fire killing the last alien of the run and triggering the final cutscene of the game. Ending the run answering the question can you beat XCOM enemy within with one soldier and the answer is yes. Yes, she can, and my word is it stressful. <laughs> 
Okay, with the ending cutscene, we've done it. I have to say this was an absolutely nerve-wracking experience, especially in the end game. It's just when the sector pod started to spawn, it was quite quite a difficult thing to beat. But thankfully, our extremely high defense made it possible, and the side abilities just helped out massively in the late game by mind control and things. But the star of the show was easily close combat specialist that single ability made the assault class the prime choice for this run and really added that offensive capability to us it's definitely a top tier ability for a challenge like this i'd say that challenge was only possible because of that as it got us over 200 kills easily but anyway yeah it was a really fun challenge it was really good and i just loved it so much and comment down below if you want to see more XCOM challenges because it's one of my all-time favorite games but for our next challenge video we're going to go back to a classic which is fallout new vegas we're going to see if we can beat new vegas with the devil gun but we're going to only have one charisma and no gambling so it's going to be really difficult to get a hold of it anyway thank you very much for watching you lovely people i wish you a fantastic day have yourself a pleasant time you beautiful wonderful people and i wish you all the best anyway once again just thank you very much it means the world you guys are watching i'll see you in the next one ta ta for now and this is insane frame signing off i'll see you in the next one have a really good day people and make sure you look after yourselves bye, -bye for now